How to challenge causality? Well, we have seen the two main questions you can ask. Is there something else? Could it be the reverse? But how do we do as researchers to find causal evidence? I will not say proof, because as I said, you don't have a direct test to prove causality. I rather prefer, and I think it's more adequate to think about causal evidence. Usually it's exactly, and that's what's fascinating about this topic. What you do as a researcher to find a causal effect, you do exactly what a, a, a detective is doing. Because actually, usually if you want to find uh, who committed a crime, you very rarely have a footage, video footage, filming someone, committing the crime. And even if it's the case, maybe the picture is blurry, maybe it's a fake. So you are never 100% sure. So what you do is that you pile up some evidence, you try to discard all the possible alibi for the, the criminal, and when you pile up enough evidence and you manage to discard the main other stories. Is it somebody else? Was this person doing something else? Well, you say, okay, I, pile, I have enough evidence now to say that he's the culprit. He committed, this person committed the crime. And it's the same thing here. And let me take you with me on an example in a fascinating paper highlighting this perfectly. So, there is this paper by Anlon in 2018 trying to answer a very important question. Again, pollution, the effect of pollution exposure, high pollution exposure on health. And here, the, this person used 100 years of data of weather and death in London. But the catch here is that it's... It, the person does not measure, we don't have data of direct measure of pollution over London, at least for early years, like before 1900s, and even early 1900s. The idea of the paper is to use fog, because when the weather is foggy, it keeps the pollution low and really affects directly or increase the pollution exposure and affect directly the health. Of citizens. So here we can look at what we call an event study. We just look with the graph on the right at the variation of death rate over time before the vertical line is when you have heavy fog week, before a week with heavy fog and after. And we see that death rate, the number of death, is increasing. But many things still might be affecting this effect. So it in their model, we can see here that there is a very strong seasonality, meaning that basically you have a higher probability to experience heavy fog during winter. Also, it correlates uh, through time, meaning that in the 1900s, you have fewer weeks with heavy fog. So, but at the same time, maybe during the winter, when it's more foggy, people get sick more easily because it's cold. In the 1900s, when you have fewer uh, weeks with heavy fog, you have also better medical systems, so it might reduce the, the risk of dying. So there are many things affecting this relationship. So you, the idea of the researcher is you build a model when you include all those elements to try to disentangle this effect. And that's exactly what's done here. Basically includes different type of effects, and it's just focused on the last graph. Once we control for all those different stories, we still find a pretty strong effect. We find before the vertical line, before the vertical line, no, it's the average level of death. It's not deviating from this average level of death within a year, but then suddenly it, it shoots up on the week with heavy fog and the week after. So this is the first evidence that potentially allowing to measure the direct effect of pollution caused by heavy fog on the health of people. But then, now you should try questioning and using those questions that we have seen before. Definitely here it's not reverse causality, it's not death causing fog. 
So, what else could it be? Maybe when you have more fog, it's difficult to see, so you have more accidents. Maybe you have more crimes because it's, it's dark, it's difficult to see people, so it might increase crime rate. So how do you discard this story? Well, you look, what the author is doing is using data on the, ta the, the cause of death. Was it violent crime, accidents, or is it like lung disease? And when you do this, you really see that for crime, the pink dots or squares are not statistically significant. It just means that it's, you don't see an effect. It remains relatively flat even during weeks with a lot of fog. But what about pneumonia or other lung disease? It shoots up. So this, again, another evidence that you can add to your list. It seems that this story is put aside and it might most certainly be a story of pollution. But wait, I have another idea. What if it's actually not pollution, but when there is bad weather, what do you do? You stay at home. Maybe you don't want to go out. Meaning that maybe you, you get sick and, and share or share germs with other people living with you because you stay inside. So it's not a story about pollution, but rather about diseases and epidemiology. Is it because maybe you don't want to go to the hospital, the doctor fails or struggle to come and move in the city, at least in the 1800s. So could it be those stories that affect these results? And again, it's not a story of pollution, maybe a story of epidemiology. Well, what the author is doing is, in my opinion, very elegant. He thought, let's take another weather shock that also forces people to stay at home. Heavy rainfall. So the, on the next graph, I'm going to show you the effect of heavy rainfall on diseases, on death, against the effect of heavy fog. People stay at home, it might be more difficult to do, go to the hospital or you don't want to, or for doctors to come when you have heavy fog and heavy rain. But the difference is that fog keeps the pollution low, rain washes the air. So if it's a story of pollution, we will find an opposite relationship. Look how incredible this graph is. It's exactly what we would expect. With rainfall, after rainfall, you really see a reduction of, of number of deaths, while after heavy fog, you see an increase of death. And here, you basically, in the paper, he discount many different stories, alternative stories here, like this, and managed to be very, to convince the reader, in my opinion, of a pretty strong causal evidence of the effect of fog and hence pollution on health in London over a hundred years. So here's the way how you can question causality. Ask the two questions, is there something else? Could it be the reverse? But also think as a detective and try to discard all those stories and find evidence for some. And then when you have enough evidence, you can be potentially convinced or more convinced that there is something. So here is how you can make better educated decision and you can fight partially misinformation by questioning what you hear, what you read with your two questions. Is it something else? Could it be the reverse? And then really going and acting as a detective to disentangle those, eff those effects and try to discard alternative stories. If you want to keep learning about causal inference and causality, you can connect with me and follow me on multiple social media, mainly on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for being here. Feel free to comment below and ask any question. I will gladly discuss with you all of this. That being said, wish you all the best and let's fight misinformation together.